Well, good morning and Merry Christmas. How's everybody doing today? Come on, can you go ahead and stand up to your feet? Let's get ready for our Christmas praise and worship. To the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven, heaven, nature sing. that you guys have joined us here today it is a special day twofold number one it's special just because it is Christmas Eve and that day in itself makes it special but the second way it's so special is because this is our first ever Christmas Eve service as his church and and it's exciting because we believe that down in the future you'll look back and say you know what 
I was a part of their very first Christmas Eve service. And, and our prayer, yeah, our prayer is that you would make that a tradition, that you would spend Christmas with his church, but not just Christmas. We would love for you to spend your time with us in community as well. So we're so glad that you're here. My name's Arian. This is my wife, Allison, and we are the pastors here at his church. Yes, and so we welcome you. And we wanna just encourage you, if you're newer here, maybe you've been here for a couple weeks, Maybe this is your first Sunday. A friend invited you, you came with family. We would love to connect with you. We'd love to come alongside you on your faith journey and help you get connected. And so the easiest way to do that is to grab this connect card that was on your chair when you got to your seat this morning or digitally if you prefer and, and you're good with technology, there's a QR code on the back of the chair in front of you. And a little later on this morning when you're sitting down, you can also scan that QR code and look for the, the button that says connect card. If you'll fill this out with a little bit of information, we've got drop boxes at the back. If you fill out this copy digitally, will come right to us. And that's just our way of getting a chance to contact you, to call you, to let you know what we have going on as a church, that we can help you plug in to a faith community, a supportive, uplifting community. And that QR code that's on the back of the chair, I would encourage you, especially if you're new, take a picture of that. That will take you to our website. It'll take you to what we believe as a church, what we're doing. If you want to give, if you give regularly to the church or you want to give, it'll take you there. But it'll let you know about all our ministries, any Anything that you could possibly want to know, you'll probably find it right there. Yeah, we're going to get ready to go back into some singing here in just a moment, but just wanted to let you know we will be here next week. We will have a New Year's Eve service at 10 a.m. So if you're not out of town, we'd love to jo we'd love for you to join us. It will be another one-hour service with our families in here together. Just a way to look back and look ahead of what God's doing. And then on January 7th, it is going to be our Vision Sunday, and we would love for all of you to come back. We spent the tail end of this year praying and asking God, what does this new year look like for His church and for His people? And so we believe God gave us a word that we want to begin to uh, prophesy and just begin to instill into our lives and really see what God is going to do. So January 7th will be Vision Sunday, and we're excited about that. But I almost forgot, if you have a teenager, next week we have a midnighter. So we're going to hang out with teenagers all day long from 1230 to almost 1230 at night. And so if you're interested in sending your kids to come and hang out with our youth group, we've got information where on that QR code you can get dialed in, get them signed up, and they'll have a great, fun, safe time so it's for sixth through twelfth graders so there's all different activities going on we're gonna go to sky zone we're gonna go bowling we're gonna feed them lots of food we're gonna ring in the new year together so you can register them online as well but we'd love for them to join us and we're just so glad you're here this morning yeah let's pray god we thank you for what you're gonna do today we thank you for what the service represents in our lives we pray as we go back into a time of just singing god that we would just align our hearts our minds for what you're gonna do today in jesus name amen
this morning. Come on, church. Fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voices. Oh, night divine. Again, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Why don't you turn and greet someone next to you and tell them Merry Christmas too as we move on to the next part of our service. Every year at this time, we jump into the middle of a story that's been told for hundreds of years. It's a story of cities decorating their streets and their sidewalks. It's a story of trees and ornaments and fireplaces, of gifts and wrapping paper and ribbons. There's expectation and wonder and hope 
a deep hope that drives us back to the beginning of the story. Because it all starts here. It starts in a manger with a baby and an angel and a scared teenage girl in love with a misunderstood young man who thinks she's worth it. It's about a child who will bring light into darkness, joy into despair, revealing a God who will redeem it all. A God who is leaving the glory of heaven to pursue the glory of a cross. A God who is becoming flesh and blood and skin. A God who is loving and offering all people a pathway back into the relationship for which they were created. It's too rich to comprehend and too beautiful to dismiss. This is Christmas. This is the story of stories. And it all starts here. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nathan LaFon, and this is Amy LaFon, and we are uh, honored to be here this morning with all of you on this very sm special Christmas Eve day. Um, and we actually get uh, and have the privilege to work with all of your kids on a weekly basis here at His Kids. And so um, this morning we're super excited. We've got some fun things in store, but one of the main things that I'm looking forward to is story time. So at this point in time, what we're gonna ask is if we have any kiddos in here who are wanting to and uh, willing to, about 12 or so and under, if you guys wanna come up around here around these steps, we're actually gonna read a story this morning. So go ahead and come on up. I see some of you coming up now. So go ahead and bring them up. Give them a round of applause as they're coming up. Come on up. And if you're feeling a little nervous about coming up, you're gonna wanna come up because we do have a treat for you afterwards. All right, so you guys can turn around and face us if you want, because we're going to read a story together. We got some more coming still this morning, it looks like. So as they're making their way up this morning, we're going to read a story. And this time of year, I love stories anyways. I love getting to read. But there are three stories that are super popular that people love to read, especially on Christmas Eve or um, Christmas Day. But some of those stories and books have been around for many years. They're classics that people talk about. I know some of the favorites that are out there are, are stories like the Charlie Brown Christmas. Raise your hand if you've ever read that book or seen the movie, maybe. Great book. The book's always better, I promise. Um, another super popular one, uh, many of you probably know this one, hopefully, The Grinch, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Uh, that's a good one, right? It's one of the favorites. And what most families will read tonight, which was The Night Before Christmas, also another classic and favorite. But all of those books and stories, as great as they are, don't compare to the best story of all that we're going to read here in just a moment. So go ahead and settle in with us this morning as we prepare to read the Christmas story. It had taken centuries for God's people to be ready. But now the time had almost come for the best part of God's plan. God himself was going to come, not to punish his people, but to rescue them. The moment God was, had been waiting for was here at last. God was coming to help his people just as he promised in the beginning. But how would he come? It's breath. As silent as snow falling, he came in. And when no one was looking, in the darkness, he came. There was a young girl who was engaged to a man named Joseph. Joseph was the great, 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 great grandson of King David. One morning, this girl was minding her own business when suddenly a great warrior of light appeared right there before her. He was Gabriel, 
and he was an angel, a special messenger from heaven. When she saw the tall, shining man standing there, Mary was frightened. You don't need to be scared, Gabriel said. God is very happy with you. Mary, you're going to have a baby. A little baby. He's the rescuer. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now, Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Where would they stay? Soon Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old, tumble-down stable. So they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there in the stable, in the quiet of night, God gave the world his most wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm. They made a soft bed of straw and used the animal's feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift. Wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us because of course, now he had. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clearer. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born to be like a spotlight, shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new dad. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his boy was. And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here. He's come. Go and see him, my little boy my son. Now where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall maybe? Or a palace perhaps? God sent his by Bethlehem. In those days, remember, People used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them rude names. I can't even mention those names here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That night, some shepherds were out in the fields warming themselves by a campfire. When suddenly the sheep darted, they were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A, a wing beat? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you. I've come to bring you happy news. For everyone everywhere, today, in David's town, in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. 
You can go and see him. He's sleeping in a manger. Behind the angel, they saw a strange growing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels. Troops and troops of angels armed with light, and they were singing a beautiful song. Glory to God, to God be fame and honor and all of our hoorays. Then, as quickly as they had appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, past an inn, They knelt on the dirt floor. They heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars, a baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like that bright star shining in the night. A light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness and helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter that star would shine. Well, boys and girls, thank you so much for coming up this morning for our special Christmas story. On your way back to your seats, there's going to be some candy canes for you. And like I said, remember, this is the best story of all and also the best Christmas story because it is the Christmas story. Merry Christmas to you all.
shall come to thee, O Israel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. The word Emmanuel is a word that you hear quite, quite often in this season. Uh, we hear it in the songs that was just sung. Uh, we see it in church. Uh, maybe you send or receive a Christmas card with the phrase Emmanuel on there. But most importantly, we find it in the biblical count of the Christmas narrative. There was a prophecy that was given by the prophet Isaiah 700 years prior to Christ's birth and arrival. And in Matthew chapter one, it's restated what this prophecy was. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter one, starting in verse 23. It says, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. The word that I'd like us just to focus on for just a minute is that word with, Emmanuel. It means God with us. Not, not necessarily God above us, not God all around us, but God with us. Why did Jesus come? Why do we celebrate Christmas season and the birth of Christ in the first place? The answer is summed up in this name, Emmanuel. It's because we follow and we celebrate and we love a God that isn't far away, but one that came to be with us. You know, around this time of year, we spend a lot of time shopping for presents, for the perfect present for the people that we love and care about in our lives. And while that's not bad, today while we're focusing on the real heart and reason of this season, I think we're really reminded that God's presence through this word, Emmanuel, God with us is better than any gift, any present we could ever receive. It truly is the greatest gift. And so we acknowledge it, we celebrate it, we cherish it. The Bible shows us several reasons why Jesus came. And this morning, we wanna focus on three of those. The first one is that Jesus came to dispel misconceptions about God. And there are so many misconceptions about God. If you were to go around and ask people who they would say that God is and, and what is God about, you'd hear all different kinds of answers. Some people believe that, that God is just this, this great big judge, that God is waiting to bust them for doing that next wrong thing, that God is like a cop sitting on the side of the road with his radar gun aimed at their lives. Some people believe that he's a God that is impossible to please or he's too far removed from the reality and really being able to be relevant to our circumstances and to care about the things that we're going through. Some people choose not to believe in God because of things that they've gone through or things that they've watched other people go through. They feel like if there really was a God that existed that he wouldn't allow things like suffering or pain or tragedies. But the story of Christmas is Jesus coming to dispel the misconceptions of who God is. God, Jesus, I mean the Son of God, best represented the heart of God. Let me show you what John chapter one and verse 18 says. It says, no one ever before gazed upon the full splendor of God except his uniquely beloved Son who is cherished by the Father and held close to his heart. Now that he has come to us, he has unfolded the full explanation of who God truly is. Jesus was God in the flesh. He's a part of the Trinity, and he came to give us an accurate view of our Heavenly Father. When I was growing up in the 90s, there was a song that was sung by Bette Midler. It was a pretty popular song, and she sang it, and it said, from a distance, what? God is watching us, right? Some of you know that song. But the thing is, the message of Christmas is that God is not watching us from a distance. The message of Christmas is Emmanuel that God is with us. He's not from a distance at all. He is right here with us. And that truth, it changes everything. It means that God is with you in the hard moments, that God is with you in the waiting seasons, that God is with you in the waiting rooms. 
that God is with you as you stand by the grave of somebody that you love. God is with you when you find out heart-shattering news. God is with you in the confusion when you don't know what to do. God is with us when we are at our lowest places in life. He's with us in the grief and in the joy. He's with us in the pain and the hardship and in the moments of, of victory and rejoicing. He's with us when we're being tempted to make choices that would compromise our integrity. And not in the sense that he's looking over your shoulder, waiting to hammer you over the head, but in the sense that he's with you, offering you his strength, offering you another choice, a way out. When you don't know how to reach your kids, God is with you. When you don't know how to connect with your spouse or bridge that gap in this season, God is with you. And with his presence, he brings wisdom, he brings direction, he brings grace, he brings strength. His presence changes everything. Jesus came and he lived and he sought out people, the broken, the hurting, the people who misunderstood him, those who thought they had it all together and those who knew they absolutely didn't. He loved people and he exemplified God's heart for having a relationship with every single one of us. The second reason why we believe that he came is that Jesus came to communicate the love of God. John 3, 16, I think many of us in this place are familiar with that verse. It's probably the most popular Bible verse in all of the Bible. And even when you go to sporting events or big crowds, oftentimes when the camera passes, you know, pans through the crowd, you see someone holding a sign that says John 3, 16. And so this morning, I'd like us to take a moment. I know many of us know it, but I'd like us to read it all together. They're going to have it on the screen, but let's read this verse together this morning. Ready? It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I think maybe you've got it memorized in this place. Some of you do. Some of you, you know the context of this verse. But can I share with you the verse that comes right after it? In verse 17, listen to this. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. These two verses, that's the message of Christmas. That Jesus came as an expression of God's love that he wants to communicate to all of us. How many of you have heard it said that Jesus is the reason for the season? I'm sure many of you at some point have heard it within your lifetime. But can I tell you this? Yes, he is the reason for the season, but so are you. He came as an expression of God's love for you. To let you know how much he loves you that he cares for you, that he has a plan for you. You see, God didn't send an angel. He didn't send an assistant to love you. He came himself. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17 through 19 tells us this. It says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. In other words, how long is God's love? Well, the answer is that it lasts forever. Human love can have a tendency to wear out. It can be conditional, and I think many of us could understand that, that sometimes our love is based on conditions for why we give it or why we want to receive it. But that's why there's so many broken people that are going through broken situations. But God's love lasts forever. You want to know how long he'll love you? Forever. And that's an amazing promise to understand. It goes on to say how wide. Well, how wide is his love? It's so wide that you can't go anywhere without his love being there to be able to reach you. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've experienced, no matter what you've gone through, his love is all around you right now, even when maybe you don't feel like it. How deep is his love? Well, his love is so deep that even if you find yourself in the deepest of pits, his love comes down. It comes beside you, underneath you to pick you up, to remind you that he loves you 
and that he has a way to be able to restore your life. And lastly, how high? His love is so high that he can overlook all of our bad choices, all of our mistakes and our failures. He lives so high that at a vantage point, he can see all of it, but yet he still chooses to say, I love you. I believe in you. I can redeem you. I can restore you. I can save you. I can cleanse you. And I can raise you. You might have made a mistake, but you are not a mistake because Jesus came to communicate the love of God for you. And the last reason we want to hit on today is that Jesus came to make a relationship with God possible. If you haven't heard anything we've said or if you've already forgotten everything that has been said today, hear this. God wants to be known by you and God wants you to know who he really is. He wants you to know his heart. But our tendency towards sin, it gets in the way of us having a relationship with God. Our brokenness, it often isolates us. It causes us to pull back so that we don't step into the love of God or to open our hearts to receive the love of God and the things that he has for us. And so Jesus came to offer us forgiveness from our sins, to offer us healing for our brokenness so that nothing would stand in the way of us having a relationship with God. He came to bridge that gap, not so that we could devote ourselves to religion, doing traditional things for the sake of ritual, but so that we could have a living, active, vibrant relationship with our Heavenly Father, so that we can be whole, so that we can receive salvation and eternal life. Everything is better with Jesus. That is the message of the gospel, even when we are going through hard times, when we are facing difficulty and storms, because the Bible tells us that Jesus gives us life and life more abundantly. He gives us everything we need because he's Emmanuel. He's with us at all seasons of our life. The problem is, is that we often try so hard for so long to do it all ourselves, to just get through everything ourselves, to power through, to do it all because we're stubborn and we're prideful and sometimes we get fearful. And so we go as hard as we can for as long as we can. But the message of the gospel is that we cannot save ourselves. No matter how strong or no matter how much we think we can, the Bible tells us that we cannot. Perspective. Those of you raising kids might relate. We, we have four boys and I will tell you that I have learned so much about my relationship with God from having kids, from being a parent. And this particular lesson I, I learned several years ago when one of our boys was just a toddler and he was being potty trained. Maybe some of you are there right now, some of you parents. Um, you're in this season of, of potty training your kids and you know that you offer them many opportunities throughout the day to take themselves to the bathroom, right? And so on this particular day that I'm gonna share this story from was, was no different. I was asking my son if he needed to use the bathroom because, you know, he had the bathroom dance going on while he was playing with his toys. He was, he was doing that dance. And again, if you've been there, you know they wait till the last possible moment to take themselves to the bathroom. So I see the dance happening. I offer the invitation, hey, do you need to go to the bathroom? I got met with what I had already been met with several times before. No, I'm good. No, I'm good. Well, I turned around to finish whatever it was that I was doing. And in that moment, I saw this blur of a child run past me as fast as his little toddler legs could take him. And he was making a beeline for our bathroom. And I thought to myself, okay, I knew he needed to go. Here he is taking himself there. He goes in, shuts the door. And I realized after a little bit of time passed that a little bit of time had passed and he hadn't come out of the bathroom. So I go and I, and I knock on the door and I ask him, hey bud, are you okay? Right away, yes, I'm fine, I'm fine. So I give it a little bit more time. I'm just standing right there outside the door waiting. Give it a little bit more time, knock. Hey, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm fine. So I'm standing there and you know, as parents, you get really nervous when it's very quiet. Things are going on. You see that blur running by, you get a little nervous. What's actually going on in there? So I said, you know what, but I, I'm gonna come in, okay? So I'm knocking, I'm like, I'm gonna come in. So I opened the door and if I can be honest with you, I froze in that moment 
because I, w- I was not prepared to see. I, I, I thought maybe, but I was not really prepared to see what I saw. And for your sake this morning, because you're all, you know, you're all dressed nice. It's Christmas Eve. You're here with your families. For your sake, I'm going to sum it all up in one word, messy. If I can just tell you that his toddler legs did not carry him as fast as his toddler legs needed to carry him to the bathroom, to make it to the bathroom on time, it didn't happen. And that was what I was witnessing all around me. And so as I walk in and I freeze because my mind instantly starts going to what this means for me, I also notice my son. And in that moment, he's standing there in this mess that he created with his head down and his shoulders hunched over and he was holding this. One in each hand, one square of toilet paper in each hand that he had gotten wet and he was attempting to clean the mess that he had created with one square of toilet paper in each hand. And as I walked in at that moment and and his shoulders hunched over and, and he looked down holding his two little squares of toilet paper, he said with all the determination that a three year old boy can muster, he said, it's okay, mama, I got this. I got this, mama, you can go, you can go, I got this, please don't be mad. But he's looking down and, and he's clutching these, these, these pieces of toilet paper. And in that moment, my heart broke because I'm sitting there thinking, I was just outside the door. I could have, I could have helped. I, I could have started helping the process. He knew I was there, but he didn't call out for me. Why? Same reasons we don't, right? He knew he had created the mess. He was ashamed, he was, he was sorry, he was disappointed in himself, but he was also afraid. He was afraid of my reaction. He was afraid that he was going to be in trouble for the mess that he had created. And in that moment, I knew I needed to speak truth into his little life. And so despite what I was witnessing, I got down on my knee so that I could be at eye level with him. And I looked him in his little brown eyes and I said, hey, I'm not mad. I'm not mad and I can help you. And as he raised his little head finally up to look at me and realized that I was being serious, his shoulders went back a little bit. He got a little bit more confident and I just grabbed him in my arms and then I helped him. And I believe with all of my heart that some of you need to get this visual of God in your mind and in your heart. Because don't we stubbornly do this as well? We cling on to our little squares of our own efforts and we try to clean up our lives and we we try to power through and we try to do all these things because of pride, thinking we can do it on our own because of stubbornness, sometimes because of fear, the fear of being disappointed. But God is saying to you that he loves you so much that he came down that he got on our level so that he could bring us what we could not do, that he got on our level not to condemn the world, but so that we could receive salvation because we cannot save ourselves. We don't possess the materials due. So Jesus came so that he could do what we can't do so that we can have a relationship with God. There's only one requirement for receiving this gift of Jesus in our life, and it's humility. It's reminding ourselves that he's God, and I'm not. That he can fix it, and I can't. That he can save me. I can't do that on my own. That he can make me into his image, because I can't. When we humble ourselves, we open ourselves to receiving the greatest gift that God has given. The gift of Christmas is something that we can't duplicate on our own. We can only choose to receive it or to reject it. God has done everything on his part to make himself available to each and every single one of us, to offer us life. But here, we have to realize that it's up to us What do we do 
with the invitation? What if we were to surrender the squares that we hold on to, to try to do it on our own, to clean up our own mess, and say, God, I can't do this. Because honestly, when we open our hearts to that, knowing that we can't do it on our own, we open ourselves to a God that is with us because he truly is Emmanuel. Can we pray for you here today? I want to offer a prayer for all of us just to understand that we know that Jesus came to dispel all these misconceptions and maybe you've held on to one of those, but today your eyes have been opened that God is not a judge out to get you, but he's a God that is willing to send his son to pay a price for you because he loves you. It's a, he's a God that says, I love you and I love you so much that I'm willing. I'm willing to send my son to pay a price that rightfully we all should have paid. And lastly, he came because he desires a relationship with all of us. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your head. And we just want to offer an invitation here today. An, offer an, an invitation for the greatest gift. As we mentioned we have a choice. Either we choose to reject it or we choose to receive it. And so if you're in here today and you say, Arian, I, I need to receive this gift. I want Christmas Eve to be a day that's not only special because of what this day is, but I want it to be special because today I'm willing to lay down my pride and say, God, I can't do it on my own. And you're willing to receive the greatest gift that has ever been given. Or maybe you found yourself that you did that at one point, but maybe you've turned your back. Maybe you've walked away. Maybe there's just been some hard things. And so maybe today it's you needing to rededicate yourself back to him. And so if you're in this place here today and you say, Arian, will you just pray for me? I just want you just to simply just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for. If you say, Arian, I want to receive the greatest gift that God gave, which is the gift of his son. Thank you. Thank you. I see those hands. You can put them down. I'm going to ask us all to pray this prayer together out loud. Say, dear God, thank you for loving me so much that you had a rescue plan for my life. You sent your son Jesus to pay a price that I should have paid. But I thank you for cleansing me and for changing me. So I ask you today to be the Lord and my Savior. And I thank you for making me new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, can we just uh, put our hands together just for those that prayed that prayer as we stand up to our feet? It's the greatest decision that anyone could make. The Bible says that when one comes back to the fold, it says that all of heaven is rejoicing. And so we rejoice, we celebrate with those that made that decision, maybe for the first time or even to rededicate your life back to Christ. We want to tell you that it's not a one-time thing where you just pray and, okay, well, what do I do now? We want to let you know that we have resources to come alongside you. Because we understand that this is a faith journey, not just a faith moment. And so on your way out today, or you can grab that Connect card, let us know that you made that decision. Because Allison and I, we would love to personally follow up with you and just come alongside you, encourage you, and let you know some of the things that you can begin to do, get involved in, so that you can continue to build your faith. If you prayed that prayer, um, whether you raise your hand or maybe you didn't, we actually have a book in the back at our information center. It's called Following Jesus. It's our gift to you just to grab it, and it walks you through, well, what now? Because sometimes you can pray that prayer, and you can leave, and it's like, well, what do, what do I do? But this book will help guide you along the way, and we encourage you to get in community. Get in community where people can love on you and encourage you and let you know everything continuing what God is trying to do within your life. It's a special moment. We're proud of you. Thankful for it. Well, we're going to get ready to, to close out our service. And uh, it's a special moment. Christmas Eve services. We do candlelight. And uh, it's a little bit different today, okay? Bear with us because the school doesn't allow you to have an open flame. But we still wanted to keep the moment sacred. And so... 
Our ushers are handing out a candle, and at the bottom, you can twist it, and it turns on. But don't worry, we got the fancy ones, because it even flickers like a real flame, okay? But here's the great thing, is that in John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, I am the light of the world, and everyone, it says that everyone who follows will have the light and no longer have to live in darkness. And it goes on to say, because the light leads their life. So today, as we, we bring this moment here to a close, and we say, we're thankful that Jesus is this reason for the season, but reminding ourselves that he came for you. And so we're gonna light this light, and we're gonna sing silent night together, knowing that in this moment, we can remind ourselves exactly what the light came to do, which is to dispel the darkness, but also allow us to light up this world. Let's sing it together. Silent night, holy night. so much that you came and that you are still with us. You are Emmanuel. God, I pray that our hearts would hold on to these truths as we get ready to dive into the rest of today and tomorrow as we celebrate Christmas, that we would not walk away from here and forget the truth of your word, that you love us. God, that you have done everything to make a way for us to know you. I pray that you would continue to stir our faith, to grow our faith, to give us the accurate view of who you are. And I pray that you would take each one of us, God, into a deeper relationship with you, that our faith would grow, and God, that we would bask in your love, God, as we celebrate this season. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here today. We want to wish you guys a Merry Christmas from our family to yours. We pray that you have an incredible day and tomorrow celebrating. We love you guys. Hope to see you guys back here next week. Merry Christmas. <laughs>